Welcome to the Interscalar Universe. Today I invite you to travel with me through time and visit sites that are underrated or even ignored by conventional archaeology. These are places that suggest a vision of human history that differs dramatically from the mainstream. This image gives you an idea of the dimension of the capital of a column of the Temple G in Selinunte. The capital is the topmost member of a column. The estimated weight of this capital is nearly 100 tons. It mediates between the column and the load thrusting down upon it. Also, the column drums weighed around 100 tons each. They were extracted entirely at the Carver de Cusa, that is 10 kilometers away. Here we can see the column drums still in the extraction process. With a diameter of 3 meters 40 centimeters and a height of 4 meters, each limestone column drum reaches a weight of nearly 100 tons. I think you don't have to be an engineer to understand that you need machines to lift loads weighting 100 tons and transport them over a distance of 10 kilometers. 100 tons was not the upper limit. The large stones of Baalbek weighed 10 times more. The so-called stone of the pregnant woman is over 20 meters long and weighs more than 1,000 tons. And it is not the largest in Baalbek. How could they be lifted and moved? Can we lift and move such heavy stones today? Yes, today there are mobile cranes that can lift loads over 1,000 tons, but we have them only since 2007. However, the transportation of a stone weighing only 340 tons over a distance of 160 kilometers to Los Angeles became an international event in 2012. The vehicle had 176 wheels and was 60 meters long. Okay, let us assume that there was an ancient technologically advanced civilization on Earth. In this case, one question still remains. Where is all the tech, the machines and vehicles? Unfortunately, the possibility to find them is nearly zero, because latest, after 40,000 years, they decompose completely. A car wheel left in the forest is hardly recognizable just after 50 years. Nature takes over any abundant structure within a few centuries. And floods wash away the rest. Hence, it is very unlikely to find remains of ancient technology on the surface of the continents. It is more likely that decomposed material lies on the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea or ocean and is covered by sediments. In fact, iron tools, a steel saw, or even a crane decompose after 3,000 years, which coincides with the presumed duration of the Iron Age. Bronze objects decompose after 5,000 years, which coincides with the presumed duration of the Bronze Age. Only gold objects remain if not melted by lava or transmuted by bacteria. The oldest artifacts of gold ever found were made 7,000 years ago. Finally remain ceramics, granite, basalt, and other natural stones and crystals. 
Consequently, we cannot exclude the possibility that 100,000 or more years ago, sophisticated materials and advanced technologies were in use. Simply, they do no longer exist due to their total decomposition. Stones are the only remaining witnesses. Fortunately, stones are good witnesses, and some of them conserved the traces of ancient advanced technology. Such traces were discovered on the Malta Islands already in the 18th century. Today, they are known as card ruts and were found almost worldwide. Ancient card ruts are also clearly visible in the Neapolis Archaeological Park in Syracuse. Many archaeologists believe that they are carriageways from the Greek period, furrowed and then muddled by the wheels of the wagons drawn by human or animals. However, this version contradicts many of the features that the card ruts have. Let us examine them more closely. All the card ruts we are talking about are petrified. The majority of known card ruts are left on neogene surfaces that formed about 15 to 5 million years ago. The profile of many card ruts clearly shows that they are from a time when the ground was still soft and muddy. This is why the tracks are so irregular in width and depth and often overlap. The appearance is more reminiscent of off-road vehicles that were traveling on muddy terrain. Geologists confirm that in Sicily, Sardinia, Malta, Crimea, and Cappadocia, the affected limestone tufa surfaces were soft around 10 million years ago. Obviously, somebody was driving vehicles millions of years ago. By the way, many footprints of dinos left 100 million years ago are well conserved and clearly visible. No scientist doubts their age and origin. Card ruts are 10 times younger and often contain footprints of beings wearing shoes. Let us return to the card ruts near the so-called Greek theater of Syracuse. Now we can imagine that such a double wheel track could be left by an excavator. Observing the card ruts from a higher position, we can even realize the work that was done with the help of that excavator. The inner profile of the majority of card ruts shows intense secondary mineralization in the same amount and of the same type as the surface around. This circumstance strongly suggests that the card ruts and the surface around are of the same neogene age. The large square-shaped holes in the middle of the card ruts could be dinosaur footprints, shown for comparison on the right image. However, they are too regular. More likely, there was working a walking excavator like this one. Some card ruts seemingly end on the beach, but then continue underwater, on the ground of the Mediterranean Sea. Other card ruts lead to the edge of deep and mile-wide canyons, where they end abruptly and continue on the rock on the other side of the canyon. All these features indicate the enormous age of the card ruts. Also, professional geologists confirm 
that the majority of card rats are millions of years old, this idea is not supported by mainstream archaeologists because it would trigger a paradigm shift in history science. At the Neapolis Archaeological Park in Syracuse, there is an area called Archimedes Tump, where you can see card ruts which were cut off by the caves. This suggests that the card ruts already existed before the caves below broke down. However, one question remains. Why ancient card ruts mostly shows the same axle track as modern vehicles? Actually, the stability of a car is quite sensible to the axle track. Of course, the wider the axle track, the more stable the vehicle. However, the required for maximum driving stability minimum axle track depends on the height of the vehicle and the position of the center of the mass. Hence, the challenge of engineering is to find, within a given range of parameters, the minimum axle track that provides maximum stability. One and a half meter is such a stabilizing axle track. This is why the absolute majority of modern cars have axle tracks of around one and a half meter. Even the standard railway gauge is around one and a half meter. The fact that ancient car ruts mostly show axle tracks of around one and a half meter suggests an advanced technological level of the ancient vehicles that have left these tracks. In human history of engineering, the discovery of the stabilizing axle track of one and a half meter is the result of centuries of empirical research. According to the interscalar numeric physical approach in engineering, an axle track of one and a half meter suppresses mechanical parametric resonance because it equals an integer power of Euler's number multiplied by the wavelength of the electron. More information on this topic you can find in my book Global Scaling, the Fundamentals of Interscalar Cosmology. You can free download from my homepage. The origin of the world's largest ancient megalithic constructions is still a mystery. Who was able to lift and move the giant stones in ancient Baalbek? Who built the giant temples of Agrigento and Selinunte? Who cut the Kailash temple out of the basalt rock? And the giant theater of Petra in Jordan? Finally, who built the Great Pyramid of Giza? Was there a technologically advanced civilization thousands of years ago? Or has our planet been colonized by an extraterrestrial civilization? Actually, the true history of mankind is still a mystery. The scientific mainstream affirms that Homo sapiens emerged in Africa around 300,000 years ago. Mesopotamia is considered to be the site of the earliest signs of the Neolithic agriculture revolution from around 12,000 years ago, with the first civilizations developing from 8,000 years ago. Regrettably, these affirmations are not anymore counted as hypotheses, but as a dogma, regardless to the increasing amount of discoveries that doubt the mainstream and suggest a very different scenario. For instance, in my video, Cradle of Civilization, the Hidden Master Plan, I show that the geolocations of ancient megalithic constructions are not random, but follow a global network of integer powers of Euler's number with respect to the wavelength of the electron 
and the proton. This circumstance suggests ancient terraforming and city planning on higher scientific level. A detailed analysis of the Great Pyramid of Giza evidences that the builders knew not only logarithms and the number pi, but also Euler's number and its stabilizing function. They applied material science and knew the electron, the proton, and their properties, and hence atomic and nuclear physics. Furthermore, they had precise knowledge in astrophysics, and they were familiar with the solar system. They knew the precise volumes of the Earth, Venus, the Sun, and the speed of light. It is very likely that they practiced space research, including the exploration of other planets. Please watch my video, The Hidden Secret of the Great Pyramid, to learn more about this exciting topic. Thanks for watching.